name is Dave Barber, and we call this segment Capital Spotlight. We're coming to you right before session from the third floor of the Rhode Island Capitol. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome a gentleman who is not new to this building by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, as we referred earlier to your colleague, Joe Almeida, we called him a seasoned freshman. You've worked in this building before. I welcome back State Representative Tom Palangio. Representative, it's good to see you. It's a pleasure to be here, Dave. Um, I, I prefer to call myself a, a green candidate. I, I re basically uh, uh, recycled myself. So I served from uh, 1992 to 2002, and then I had the uh, pleasure to work with Senator S uh, Rep uh, Congressman Cicilline when he was mayor as the lobbyist for the city of Providence, and now I'm back again uh, serving as a legislator. W what was the one thing, if you had to pick one thing, that prompted you to seek office again? I guess um, when I walk around the neighborhood, basically I represent a portion of the district I did in the past. And uh, when I see the abandoned housing and the foreclosures and, uh, you know, the, the community kind of uh, losing some of its luster, um, I thought it was time and the seat was available, it was open uh, during, through redistricting. And I thought it'd be a great, great opportunity to get back and use some of my uh, experience back at the State House again. Now, obviously, this will be a review for some folks who remember you from when you were here before. But um, refresh everyone's memory. Tell us a little bit about yourself professionally and personally. Right. Well, as I said, I was elected in 1992 and I served to 2002. And then I left the city, uh, left the, the state, rather. And I worked for the city of Providence for about five years. So you were a full-time lobbyist? Yes, yes. From there, um, I worked for AAA, Southern New England. We worked very hard on the seatbelt bill. Um, and then, uh, since then, I'm back as a legislator. Uh, are you a native of Providence, family still yeah. here in the area? Yes, born and raised, uh, right, actually pretty much from the same community I represent currently. Uh, born and raised uh, in the Elmhurst area of Providence. Uh, still reside there to this day. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great city. I love the city, born and raised. And um, it means a lot to me to see the city, uh, uh, you know, do well. And it's, you know, hurts a bit when you see so much... Um, abandoned housing and foreclosures and uh, you know the city kind of uh, losing a bit of its luster so you know that's why I'm back trying to uh, turn that around a bit. Uh, what about your committee assignments are you pleased with those? Yes very much so as a matter of fact uh, the speaker was uh, kind enough to put me on government oversight and um, you talk about issues in the community most of the uh, times people ask you questions it's about an agency within the state of Rhode Island so what government oversight is going to do is pull particular agencies in and discuss with the agency how it interacts with the populace. So I thought that was kind of exciting. What about uh, pet legislation? Do you have certain issues that are very important to you and that you hope to work on uh, during uh, session 2013? Yes. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, abandoned housing, uh, foreclosures. Uh, there's so much foreclosure going on in the state, particularly in my community. Um, I suggest that if the bank is going to foreclose on a particular piece of property, they need to get a body back in that property within three months. Whether they let the person stay there, whether they foreclose on the property, whether they sell the property or rent it out, it's the vacant properties that people go in and steal the, the coffer and, uh, you know, break windows and ultimately cause fires and it basically makes a mess out of the community. So that's probably one of my primary pieces of legislation I want to put in to force the banks to do something with these properties uh, once they foreclose. Even after you left elected office, you weren't ever far away from this building. Um, a lot of your work would bring you here to this building. But now that you're seated as a member of the General Assembly, does anything feel different this time versus when you were here before? I think there's a lot more openness, if you will. Um, a lot more uh, uh, participation with the members, a lot more, um, you know, uh, collaboration. Collaboration. Maybe? Excellent. Yes. Well, that, that would certainly uh, serve everyone well if that is indeed the case. I know that you and your colleagues uh, certainly have your work cut out for you, although the economy is improving. Um, it's not improving fast enough for any of us. And um, we're fighting a good fight here in Rhode Island. And I know that you and your fellow colleagues are cut out for the task. I wish you and the members of the Rhode Island House of Representatives the very best. 
Dave, thank you so much for having me. It's good to have you here. And of course, thank you so much for watching. My name is Dave Barber. We call this segment simply Capital Spotlight.